Hey everybody, this is graphic designer Roberto Blake of RobertoBlake.com helping you create something awesome today. So in today's video, I'm going to talk about how to choose a Mac laptop as a graphic designer. Now, I don't necessarily think you absolutely need a Mac laptop per se if you're going to go into graphic design, but many graphic designers want to use Mac laptops for a lot of reasons. Uh, there are a lot of reasons in the industry in terms of optics and marketing to use a Mac laptop instead of a Windows PC. So instead of doing a Mac versus PC video, which I've already done and covered many times before here on the channel, I am going to talk about which of the three laptops in the Mac lineup makes the most sense for a graphic designer to buy. Many of you already guessed, it is the MacBook Pro. But if you're trying to save money and go with the either MacBook, which has been unretired, or the MacBook Air, I kind of want to preface this with why I would avoid those options in favor of the MacBook Pro and if you're going to compromise which one of these two laptops on the lower end is the most appropriate one. So first let's understand what the new Mac lineup looks like. So we've got the new MacBook which is a you know engineering marvel yada 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 it's one solid piece of metal. I get it. It's really fancy on the optics, got a great Retina 12-inch display. I've already done a whole other video about that. But here's the thing. It's $1299. It's $100 less than the MacBook Pro, at least the entry-level model of the MacBook Pro. It's using um, an Intel Core M processor, dual core. The 13-inch MacBook Pro has an Intel 5, which can go up to, I believe, an i7. So you got i5, i7 processor at what, like 2.7 gigahertz? Um, yeah, let's go with that instead of this 1.6 gigahertz that with turbo can go up, yada, yada, yada. Let's go with the pro power here. Let's go with the Intel Iris graphics. Let's go to the 15 inch model that has the Nvidia graphics up on the high end. And let's look at the fact that we can max that out at 16 gigs of RAM. It's kind of hands down obvious that between the two of these, that the MacBook Pro is superior. No one's debating that. However, I don't think it's worth it to even try to get the MacBook if you're a graphic designer. I don't think that's who it's for. I think it's for a casual user who wants the you know, MacBook, doesn't necessarily want to go the route of the MacBook Air for whatever reason, even though I think that's still the better laptop between the two. I'm going to throw the MacBook to the bottom, say the MacBook Air is superior, which is why the MacBook was retired in the first place. It was one of the last decisions Steve Jobs made while he was alive, by the way. So I would say that if you're going to choose a Mac laptop, it's only two choices. Or, you know, kind of two choices. It's, do I get a maxed out MacBook Air, because the entry level model, not even worth considering. Or, do I get a MacBook Pro, and then decide to go with the entry level, or do I max it out? Now, depending on what you're doing as a graphic designer, will determine some of this for you. If you're a web designer, or you're primarily doing web-based graphics, photo editing, very light photo retouching and photo manipulation, you could get away with a maxed out MacBook Air as long as you're going with the eight gigs of RAM, you're going with the maximum amount of hard drive space, you know, you do all of those things, then I could say that you could get away with the MacBook Air. However, at that price point, you're not really saving any money. You might as well have went into a 13 inch MacBook Pro with better specs for that price. Just saying. So it really comes down to the 13 inch and 15 inch MacBook Pro. Now both of those have retina display which the MacBook Air does not. That's another reason not to necessarily go the MacBook Air route. That's another reason people might consider the MacBook which I think they just made it confusing by not making retina the standard across the board. Don't know why they didn't do that. But so you've got the MacBook Pro 13 inch and 15 inch model. Personally, 15 inches for me is the minimum I really want in a laptop because I prefer bigger screens. That's why I like to use the iMac instead of my Windows laptop a lot of times, not because of a Mac versus Windows thing. I use that on the go all the time and I'm happy with it, but it is getting older, I need to retire it. I'm looking at potentially going to a MacBook Pro, but for budget reasons, I might go with a Dell or an Asus with comparable specs to a MacBook Pro and save a whole thousand dollars that I can put into new camera equipment or other upgrades. So I'm, I'm potentially going that route. 
But if I did go with a Mac laptop, I wouldn't hesitate to go with the MacBook Pro 15 inch. Uh, you could go up to 16 gigs on that, which is great if you're doing Photoshop work, video editing, motion graphics, high-end print work like I do in terms of 24 by 36 posters. This is gonna be a monster and will handle anything that you throw at it. There are people editing feature films on the maxed out MacBook Pro, so I would say that that is a good endorsement for it. On the other hand, if you're doing logo design, web design, basic photo retouching, photo editing, even advanced photo retouching, photo editing, the eight gig maxed out MacBook Pro at the 13 inch model will still get by just fine for you and it is a little lighter and it is a little cheaper. So I would say that then it comes down to your budget. But as always, when you're picking a laptop for graphic design work, you need to really preference uh, three to four things. Processing power needs to be above two gigahertz in my opinion. You need to go with i5 or i7 if you can. i3 you could get by on, but I, I really feel like i7 and i5 is where it's at. Obviously the preference is i7. Uh, eight gigs of RAM as a minimum. Eight gigs of RAM as a minimum. Photoshop is a RAM intensive program. So is Premiere Pro, so is After Effects. Even on my $500 Asus laptop at eight gigs of RAM, I got tremendous performance in all the Adobe applications from it, and it was using an older processor as well, dual core, but it was a uh, 2.2 gigahertz, I believe. So with a strong processor, even with built-in uh, video card and eight gigs of RAM, you can do heavy level Photoshop and video editing work and get by. Now on the rendering, it's going to be slow. For that, you do want 16 gigs of RAM. You do want an i7 processor, and you absolutely want a video card for playback if you can get it to keep your editing smooth and to offset the GPU acceleration, etc. So that's why I would recommend the MacBook Pro 15 inch because you can upgrade to having the Nvidia graphics card in there, the 16 gigs, the i7, and the lightning fast SSD hard drives. Fast hard drives are also gonna make a difference SSDs are tremendous. If you can get, I would say 512 gigs in terms of space, as a minimum, I would go there. You could get by on 256, I don't recommend it. I recommend you get 512 an external hard drive, one terabyte if you can afford it. So, what would I buy? If I didn't have an issue of a budget, I would absolutely go with a 15 inch MacBook Pro maxed out. If I had a budget, I had to preference one thing on the 15 inch MacBook Pro beyond the standard, I would max out the RAM, not worry about the hard drive space because I can overcome that with an external hard drive. Uh, I wouldn't worry about the graphics card because the Intel Iris graphics and Iris Pro graphics are still top notch and even Photoshop does not necessarily use, except for very specific features, the GPU as much. I know a lot of people think, oh, graphics card, I need a big graphics intensive machine. You do not. Uh, processor and RAM are where it's at. If I was gonna max out or upgrade one thing on this machine, I'd get the 16 gigs of RAM before I get anything else. So that is what I would do. And I would do that in any laptop that I buy because I've seen it before from the cheapest to the highest end laptop, what's going to be your bottleneck is your RAM. And then after that, I would say it's your processor as far as the Adobe applications are concerned, RAM, then processor, then hard drive speed, and GPU is at the back end there, and that's it. So if you're buying a laptop, that is my advice. If you're buying a Mac laptop, in my opinion, for graphic design and photo editing and video editing, do not even consider the MacBook. Possibly, you can get away with light stuff at the 13 inch maxed out MacBook Air, but at that price, you might as well have went into a 13 inch MacBook Pro and you would be doing better for the cost. So I would say it's really down to two laptops, 13 inch MacBook Pro or the 15 inch MacBook Pro. If you want to save money and you want hardware and specs that are comparable to the MacBook Pro, I would say look at some Asus model laptops. I'll have recommendations in the description below. Uh, and I would say look at Dell in the XPS series. If you need something on a budget, there's the Inspiron series, but the XPS series is fantastic and comparable to the MacBook Pro line, in my opinion, in terms of the later models. So that is my uh, recommendation where that is concerned. So if you're choosing a MacBook for a laptop, go with the MacBook Pro, choose between a 13 inch for the display or the 15 inch. 
Also, when it comes to displays, a lot of you say that you buy Mac laptops because of the color accuracy and the displays. Um, I use the iMac and I will attest to the accuracy in the display, but I'm going to recommend that you look into getting a Color Monkey calibrator because you can get um, inaccurate displays even on a Mac in terms of printing. And if printing is your concern, you need the Color Calibrate and Color Monkey is a cheap, affordable way to color calibrate for what it is. I will have a link to that in the description below. So you should really consider that because then even if you have a secondary monitor, you can color calibrate that as well and have color accuracy no matter what computer or what monitor you're using. So the brand there, it's not, it, it does matter, but it really doesn't because if you color calibrate your monitor, everything will be fine for print design. So that's not a reason to spend a thousand dollars more when you can just spend $160 more for a little device that allows you to have accurate color. So those are my thoughts on the Mac laptop lineup and what you should be buying as a graphic designer, video editor, or photographer. If you still have questions about that, leave them in the comment section below. I will try to answer as many of them as I possibly can. Like this video if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe. Check out the other awesome content on the channel. As always, you guys, thanks so much for watching, and don't forget, create something awesome today.